last person now. What's up, y'all? Yeah, so we're going to talk about a little uh, contribution-based governance here. <laughs> All right, OK. <laughs> and how contribute the idea of contribution management actually creates the potential for this. I hope you all can hear me. I know it's kind of loud, but we'll make it work. So hi, I'm Stefan. I'm head of growth at Govern. We do a lot of fun stuff there, and we're going to we're going to talk a lot about um, what does it mean to have contribution-based governance. So let's start from back to basics. So how do we generally think about DAOs, meaning what mental models do we usually use for it? Basically, what that means is if you think of DAOs as you know, closer to companies, you're going to think about uh, are you going to refer to maybe corporate governance to, to try to figure out how you should be running things. If you think of them as you know, closer to co-ops, you're going to think more about, you're going to refer to how co-ops uh, co have done things, how worker co-ops have been, what they've done in different countries, etc. Or even, you know, just general autonomous communities that have existed uh, throughout history, right? So basically, the mental models you use for DAOs dictate how you actually think about DAO governance. Why is this important? Uh, I don't know how many of you have read uh, A Prehistory of DAOs by Kia Krutler. It's one of my favorite DAO reads, probably, in my opinion, one of the most important in the space. I'll, I'll leave this up for a second. It's, it's a must read for sure. But for me, when I came into this, to, when I got introduced to DAOs, when I started thinking about it, to me, it always made sense that they were close to cooperatives and that thus they should be governed close to how cooperatives are governed. Um, and it, the, the article also talks about a lot about co-ops, but also a lot about just alternative structures in general. And I think we need to think about we need, we need to think a lot more about different styles of governance in general and different and alternative models for it. Now, there's been a lot of conversation over the years. It's progressed really well about moving beyond token weighted governance moving beyond governance where the people with the most money can actually, uh, or people with the most money make the decisions. So a lot of talk has been about, you know, how do we move past this? How do we make uh, more alternative forms? How do we do more experimentation on governance itself? And how do we enable these things at the same time? <laughs> so, and we'll, we'll, we'll dive more, a bit more into that later. So, um, I don't, remember, I don't know how many of you remember this talk by Steve Ballmer from Microsoft. <laughs> the developers, 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 which is honestly one of my favorite talks, not just because it's hilarious, but also because it was actually a really great call to action for Microsoft to say, OK, for the future of Microsoft, for, you know, for us to flourish, we need to surface and focus on developers. We need to make sure we're building not just for them, but also with them as much as possible, making sure that you know, we're targeting them, them in all of our decision making, making sure that their needs are, <laughs> their needs are effective uh, and their needs are look, uh, looked out for. So I actually think we need to be doing this in DAOs as well, but focus on contributors. So I'm not going to come up here and say contributors, 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 contributors. Co yeah. <laughs> but basically, we need to be making within the DAO ecosystem. We need to be making sure that contributors are the focus and that we're enabling them in everything that we do. Whether you have a core team, whether you have admins, it doesn't matter. It's making sure that contributors are, making sure that every decision that happens in DAOs are focused on contributors, that they benefit from it, and not only that they're benefiting from it, but also that contributors are part of the decision making as much as possible. But of course, we need to make sure that the governance style allows for that, enables that. So to be honest, a lot of people, when I talk about this, a lot of people ask me why. They say, oh, well, capital is actually maybe the best type of coordination. Um, I'm going to, I know this is kind of a political statement, but I'm going to take a quote from Lincoln. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite quotes. 
It's basically that labor is prior to and independent of capital. Capital is only the fruit of labor and can never have existed if labor had not first existed. Labor is the superior of capital and deserves much the higher consideration. What does that mean? Um, just again, that we need to be surfacing the work and focusing on the work as much as possible. And to be honest, even, well, yeah, and then capital is the result of labor. The labor comes first. Even in this space where we literally create capital out of thin air through tokens, you could, have a DAO, you could start a DAO, it could have a billion dollars in the treasury, and if you have no contributors to actually do anything with it, nothing happens. So at the end of the day, no matter what labor is, what is driving capital? So if we want to build this kind of ecosystem, an ecosystem where the contributors and the people who are doing the work are actually centered, we need, we need to get past a few obstacles first. How do we actually make this happen? So what are some, I'm going to surface three obstacles that everyone in the DAO space understands. Civil resistance is hard. We all know this, uh, especially when you're dealing with tokens. You have no idea if a token is owned by one person or 20 people, or you could have one wallet uh, that maybe people are running through. It doesn't really matter. Um, this is one of the hardest things in the space right now. You have a lot of people working on it. Shout out to Gitcoin that's doing a lot um, in that space. The second thing, it's so hard to track what work is actually being done. The number one thing that always comes up when I talk to DAOs is, and people who work in DAOs, no one knows what's going on. Bottom line, DAOs are extremely chaotic in, <laughs> in the most extreme way possible. So honestly, um, what, you, what you typically have is like either, you know, someone, someone does something, someone does a task, someone does some kind of work, they don't say that they did it, so no one knows it was done. And then someone else comes up and tries to do the same thing. And now you're just duplicating efforts. It's very inefficient. It's very problematic. Or you have the opposite where someone says they're going to do something, and they never actually do it. And you don't find out until like weeks or a month later, and now everything's behind. So this is one of the biggest problems. And of course, a lot of people are working on solving them. A lot of DAOs currently use bounty systems, which are effective in certain contexts, but overall it doesn't, you can't really, you can't really build an effective community with just bounty systems, right? And the other thing is that bounty systems are very top down. It's very much focused on maybe one person or maybe like the core team saying, we want this and this and this, go do it. And then people do it, which takes away the autonomy of DAOs to begin with, which takes away the idea of people coming in and contributing and growing with the DAO itself as a community. And the other thing is, a lot of DAOs are still using spreadsheets to manage and track the work that's being done, which, if that's the future of work, we might as well pack it in, because we failed, basically. <laughs> so there's still so much, that, that's still a huge issue that's coming up. And the third thing, there's no taxonomy for contributions. What does that mean? It basically means that you can have two people working on the same thing, or a group of people working on the same project, for example, or working on very similar things. But when it's done, and it's submitted, and people are talking about it, I could say, you know, I did ABC. You could have done the same thing, but you might call it one, two, three. There's no real coordination or, or maybe even standardization of that. So the question, the question is really, and I'm going to go a little bit more into taxonomy a little later, but it, the problem is basically that there's no, there's no taxonomy, and there's no um, real way for people to come to a, uh, one point. So, sorry, I'm just looking at my time here. So yeah, at Govern, we believe that contribution management is the key, that it paves the way for not only solving those problems, yay, not only solving those problems, but also for bringing out contribution-based governance. And I'm gonna, I'll just run really quickly through what we're building. And this is actually, this is, I have a few old screenshots. We've updated the UI quite a bit, but this is all the fundamentals. And basically all this is very simple. A contributor comes on to govern, records what they did. You know, you put the name of what you did. You maybe upload proof via a link or an attachment if necessary. It has the date and then you just add it very quickly. Um, we also have the category, which I'll explain a bit more as well, but 
and then you know when you've done that over time you create this bas basically this list of the of the the activities that you've done the contributions that you've done as well as the categories of those activities and of course you can mint them on chain just to have that as well and we're going to focus on a lot of other ways to interact with that as well but going back to the category so this is actually something that's really interesting um, when you have not just the work that the records of the work that was done but also the categories of the work it means two things one you as a contributor can see over time um, how you're working the things that you're doing but also the types of work and also for your DAO it's actually it actually makes it very effective to coordinate because after you know people are submitting the contributions after people are doing work over time you can actually see actually let me give you a quick preview here you can actually see what's uh, what people are doing within your DAO over time the types of work that you're doing which actually makes it one very easy for you know when you're onboarding new people they always say oh I don't really know what to do um, I don't really know how to start and maybe maybe like the core team or whoever's you know doing things doesn't really know where to put people either but when you have the categories of work that people are doing you can easily see okay there's a lot of things happening over here a lot of things getting done over here not so much happening over here maybe we can put them we can shift and channel them over here where to fill in some gaps or to start them off you can put them over here to like get comfortable get used to different things uh, but let me go back a sec and it also just actually allows you to build out the culture of your DAO as well because if you can see you because through the categories you can see like what do people in the DAO like to do what do people focus on how is that shifted over time where where can where can we take this where can we go with this um, and of course you may ask okay if people are recording their own stuff servicing their own work what if someone lies what if someone says they did something that they didn't do well we have attestations for that which are basically uh, adding a level of verification validation just so that okay if I said I did this and then you know two other contributors can attest to it then you know it adds that level of validation and you could e you could even say oh well we need these particular people to validate it every time it, it's super flexible um, and honestly I think oof, sorry about that uh, <laughs> but when you actually use contribution management it kind of solves these issues right so the problem is several resistance obviously we're not creating several resistance itself but we're reducing the need for it because if you're simply rewarding the work that was done you're rewarding the work that was done directly so you don't have to worry about oh how many people are over here it's just you you reward the work directly uh, the work is tracked bottom line simple easy effective and again the idea of um, not not having a taxonomy for contributions you can actually create that taxonomy in real time and this honestly we could do a whole <laughs> we could do a whole talk just on taxonomies we actually have like our research team is actually fully focused on this idea of taxonomy uh, but basically what what gets really interesting with that is that you know when DAOs start when people first launch a DAO maybe you only need a few things to happen so you can actually preset uh, specific categories of work that you expect your contributors to do but at the same time and especially as things go along as more people join as more things happen your contributors can actually create their own category to say okay I actually think this type of work will be very valuable for this DAO um, and they'll put it in the same way they, they record their other contributions and they submit it and that actually creates a conversation around basically a proposal really of hey what do you, what does everyone think and whether it's like the core team making a decision hopefully it's ev like as many people as possible involved in that process but yeah it, it creates this idea of I can actually as an individual contribu contributor push this proposal of work or of a type of or this type of work um, that we can do and then that creates a conversation around it and of course it can either be accepted or rejected but even if it's rejected it's created this important conversation and it's done it's done it in a way where you don't have to go and fill out a whole proposal you're proposing it through the work that you're doing which is just makes it much more intuitive much more effective and 
it, it wastes less time, basically. So let's backtrack, going to backtrack a little bit here. Slide's a little wonky, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about DAO tools for a second. So I'm sure most of you know and are familiar with uh, most, if not all, of these tools. And I didn't put them in any particular order. It's just like kind of j put them together in terms of either focus on reputation or value or value frameworks. So the first thing about DAO tooling, why are we even here? So honestly, no, no matter what anyone says, and if someone says this, they're like, you know better. But basically, no, th there is no one tool to rule them all. Um, there is no one DAO tool that everyone can only use, and that's like the only solution, right? The, the, the point of all this is to get away from monoliths, to get away from wall gardens, to get, to get away from closed ecosystems. What, we, what DAO tools are building and what we all should be focused on is this idea of a stack, right? Where you're, use, where you're filling out your DAO stack with different layers of different tools. Now, those tools may change depending on who you are, what your community needs, what you know, phase you are in your community's uh, growth. But at the end of the day, there should be you know, a number of different tools that you're using together. And on the, on the, on what we should be doing as DAO tools as well is, one, making sure we're working together and collaborating together. Two, making sure it's as easy as possible for DAOs to use these tools within a stack to make sure, and that, that, that means you know, more documentation, more, um, more content together, more, collab more collaborative content, things like that, and of course, more integrations. This is Web3, we have choice, we have composability, let's make it work. Now, to explain what this is, I have a few minutes left. Um, yeah, so reputation and value frameworks are things that are very important for DAOs. This is, this is, uh, the fact that we have teams focused on this is extremely important. Of course, reputation is something that everyone's talking about now, which is amazing to see. Value frameworks are key because how are people getting paid? How do we figure out how to compensate people? That comes from, like, all that comes from these layers. And what we can do with these DAO tools is put them together. So what does it mean to have a contribution layer? So Govern, at Govern, we're actually creating a contribution graph out of all the contributions that are happening in real time. And that itself serves as a contribution layer that actually enhances and supercharges um, the other layers. So what does that mean? If, you, if you're taking, you know, if you're building reputation through uh, one particular tool, if you're building value frameworks through one particular tool, if you start with a, contrib if you start with a base layer of contributions, that pushes up and it, it, it basically enhances how the other tools are operating. So say, for example, how are we building reputation? If you start directly from the contributions, that makes it much easier to, to create a reputation out of it. If you start with the contributions, that makes it easier to build value frameworks from there because you have this layer that's already built for you, basically. So when you combine these together, you can basically, you can supercharge your DAO and your DAO stack because you're focusing not on, not on maybe one tool, but you're focus on, focusing on the layers themselves. And again, when you put the layers together, it not only more effectively solves the problems that, um, that I mentioned earlier, but it also paves the way for this idea of contribution-based governance. Because when you are using it, when you're using these tools in a certain way, when you're starting with the contribution layer, then you can build governance out of it, and you can, there's so many things you can do. It enables a lot of different use cases, whether it's you know, memberships, identity and reputation, compensate, compensation, voting. It doesn't really matter. Like, all of these different uh, layers can be added to by starting with a contribution layer. So this is what we're building. Come join us. Come play around with our, with our tool, govern.app, super easy. And come supercharge your DAOs.